newly elected U.S. Senator from California, Kamala Harris. And listen, in her first weeks in the Senate, she has already made the cause of health care as a human right her main lucky to have Kamala Harris fighting for us. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> United States Senator Kamala Harris! incredible people before me and all of the voices and all of the folks that we represent with our loud voices today. I know things are going to be all right. You know, and they may have taken the House, they took the Senate, they took the White House, but they did not take our power. Who's got the power? Who's got the power? We got the power. Who's got the power? We got the power. Who's got the power? We got the power. So we will fight. So we will fight. And we are not going to give up. You know, this is, it's, it, it is poignant in a sad way, Mitch Katz, that we are having this conversation as we honor an incredible American, Dr. Martin Luther King. And let's remember something. As part of that great civil rights agenda, which was all about what are civil rights, what represents the best of who we are and can be as a country, part of that civil rights agenda that Dr. King articulated was that access to health care is a basic fundamental civil right. Yeah. So here's, here's how I've been thinking about things in this post-11-8 world. Post 11 8. That's where we are, folks. So here's the thing. I think what we all know is this is quite clearly an inflection moment in the history of our country. I think this is a very pivotal moment. I think of this as that moment in time when Dr. King marched and fought. I think of this as that moment in time when my parents met, when they were graduate students at the University of California, Berkeley in the 1960s and active in the civil rights movement. It's an extraordinary, pivotal moment. It's a moment that many of us have experienced in our personal lives, you know, when circumstances and the situation required us to look in a mirror and with furrowed brow ask a question, who are we? I think this is that moment in time for our country where we are collectively being required to look in a mirror and with furrowed brow we are asking a question, who are we? Yeah. In LA, I believe the answer is a good one. Imperfect though we may be, I believe we are a great country. Yeah. And part of what makes us great is we were founded on certain ideals. We were founded on those ideals spoken in 1776 when we said we are all and should be treated as equals. We were founded on ideals that say that there will be freedom of religion, freedom of association, that we will respect the dignity and the individuality of all people, and that we will, in allowing a pursuit of happiness, also understand part of that means allowing access to meaningful health care. Those are the fundamental principles upon which we were founded. Those are the ideals upon which we were founded. And so I say, take back the flag. Yeah. This is our country. Yeah. And let's be clear about 
something. When we are fighting, when we are fighting to say all, all of us should be entitled to access to health care, when we say the Affordable Care Act should not be repealed, this is fundamentally about fighting for the best of who we can be as a country. And you know, I think there are two definitions of what it means to be a patriot. There's one definition that suggests you defend your country, whatever it does. And then there is the kind of patriot I know us all to be. The kind that will fight each and every day for the ideals of our country. That's what this is about. And this, and folks, this post-11-8 world is requiring us to fight more than we have in a very long time. So I've been in D.C. the last couple of weeks. I'm so glad to be home. <laughs> and so we had this thing called Votorama. So I'm walking around those halls. You know, I don't know where anything is. I'm just walking around. I got lost half the time. All these young students were just all eager to be there, which is showing me where to go. Very humbling indeed. And um, and so we had this this day and night called Votorama. And I'm like, what is Votorama? And it turned out to be a night that ended at about two in the morning mm -hmm. where mostly the Republicans were offering their amendments. And in this case, that would destroy one of the most significant public policy initiatives that we as a country have seen since Social Security. And that was the Affordable Care Act. And it was, it was extraordinary. It was extraordinary, and it was extraordinary to watch because there I am in the Senate chambers, and for any of you who have seen it or been there, it's an awesome place, right? The things that have happened there that have been when we were at our best about fighting for who we are at our best. But that night and into those early hours of the morning, I saw people playing politics with a basic thing like health care. The human body. We aren't born, and then you know the doctor says you have had a Democrat or a Republican. <laughs> there are certain things that have to just be fundamental yeah. about what is right and not partisan. This ain't even bipartisan. This should be a nonpartisan issue. They have got to stop playing politics with our bodies. interest of the country. Okay, what is it? Well, we don't have a plan. <laughs> so, we have a plan, though. We have a plan. And part of our plan is, as we go forward, articulating to our neighbors and friends. I mean, I know a lot of us, we are native Californians. A lot of us have chosen California as our home, and we know people all over the country. And so part of people have been coming up to me, Kamala, what can I do? Well, remember, our voice is our power. And right now, that means getting on the phone and, and texting and emailing and, and calling up folks who you know all over the country and reminding them about what is at stake if the Affordable Care Act is repealed. Remind them, for example, that if you have a pre-existing condition like asthma or high cholesterol, repeal diabetes, Repeal means insurance can deny coverage or char charge extremely high premiums. That's not a Democrat or Republican. Why are they playing politics with that? If you are a woman, repeal means paying more for birth control, for mammograms, higher premiums for just being a woman. And I am about to say, now let's be clear about this. I'm just gonna go, go real basic right now. body was constructed in the way it has been constructed, let's be clear about this, to perpetuate the species. Yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, you know, I know they don't believe in climate 
climate change and therefore, you know, they must not really care about extinction of certain species. But, you know, the reality is if you don't take care of a woman's body and her health needs, and in particular her reproductive health needs, you are risking the end of the species. Let's be clear about that. Keep it real. Repeal of the Affordable Care Act. If you're a senior approaching Medicare age, repeal means paying outrageous premiums because of a pre-existing condition. Things like arthritis and diabetes. That ain't right. No. If you are a senior with Medicare, repeal means higher premiums, co-pays, and deductibles, including higher prescription drug costs. No. That ain't right. And I've worked on these cases for a long time. It means if you are a victim of domestic violence, that you can be denied access to health care because being a victim of domestic violence is considered a pre existing condition. That ain't right. So we know what is at stake. The stakes are so high. And even though we've got a big fight in front of us, guys, we cannot retreat. You know, it's an interesting thing in my experience. When folks are being attacked, we usually have one of two reactions, to fight back or to retreat. We got to remind everybody that we are all in this together. We have got their back. We have got each other's back. And we are prepared to fight. I'm going to close my point with, with a reminder of something. The wife of Dr. Martin Luther King, Coretta Scott King, famously said, I'll paraphrase. Coretta Scott King famously said, the fight for civil rights, and so read into that, the fight for justice, the fight for equality. The fight for civil rights must be fought and won with each generation. Yes. Yes. Now, when she said that, I think she had two points in mind. One is, it is the very nature of this fight for civil rights and equality and justice that whatever gains we make, they will not be permanent. Yes. It's the nature of it. Understanding that then, the second point is, do not despair. Yeah. Do not be overwhelmed. Do not throw up our hands when it is time to roll up our sleeves and fight. Thank you so much, Senator Harris. Thank you also to our elected officials.